Since the Civil Rights Movement, African Americans have earned positions atop the business world that few could have imagined possible during the long years when the color line of racial discrimination and segregation divided white America from black America. Among the last barriers to break was the corporate world, a bastion of exclusion and entitlement deep into the 20th century. One of the leaders most responsible for integrating corporate America is Vernon Jordan, who first rose to prominence as a civil rights lawyer. In 1972, he became the first black member of the board of directors of the Selenese Corporation, Bankers Trust, and J.C. Penney. By my very presence on these boards, I was doing some teaching in corporate America. Wall Street was a huge part of the American society from which we were excluded. And so I became an advocate for inclusion. The 1970s was a fruitful period for African-American entrepreneurs. In 1971, Johnson Products, a hair product company founded by Joan and George Johnson, made history as the first black-owned business to be listed on the American Stock Exchange. More progress was made towards the end of the decade when Robert Johnson, a lobbyist for the cable television industry, persuaded a businessman to back him with $500,000 of funding so he could start his own cable station. He would name it BET, Black Entertainment Television. When I was looking at BET, there had been black print. John Johnson, of course, the genius that he was, had mm -hmm. Ebony and Jet. Ed Lewis had Essence, and mm -hmm. Earl Graves had Black Enterprise. There was black radio. Mm -hmm. And so- And black newspapers. And black newspapers. Mm -hmm. So, cable was sort of a follow on to the concept of black media reaching black audiences and selling to advertisers who mm -hmm. want to reach black consumers. Mm -hmm. BET went public in 1991. And when Johnson sold it to Viacom in 2000, he became America's first black billionaire. In 2009, the boundaries of black success on Wall Street were pushed further when Ursula Burns took command of the Xerox Corporation, becoming the first black woman to serve as CEO of a Fortune 500 company. The rules of the games have changed somewhat. Some of the CEOs in corporate America defied all the odds and made it but the game to a large extent remains the same. Much more work remains to be done to integrate the C-suites of corporate America and empower African-American men, and especially African-American women, to lead.